because yesterday morning I had read, I had finished reading the book of Revelations on Monday, and then I came back to read, um, and then yesterday morning I asked the Lord, what book should I go to? And he said, go back to the beginning because you're going to see the, what, why revelations took place. Now, of course, I've read the book of Genesis. I've read through the Bible several times, but the Lord was speaking to me. And so, um, and then he said, see that no one steals your crown. And so I said, okay. So I began to hear these words and I heard the word poured out. I heard, let no one steal your crown. And I heard that in the last days, people won't endure sound doctrine. And then I heard the Lord say, so he was just dropping all these scriptures on me. And, um, so I said, okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to um, start in Genesis. So I read the book of Genesis. I just read two chapters yesterday morning because I was in a hurry and I'm getting to the word, but I want to set it up for you. And then last night I was about, I was preparing to speak on a call that I was invited to minister to, and I didn't have a word. And the Lord told me to go to, um, because I was just being quiet because it's a prayer line. So I'm like, okay, Lord, what do you want me to speak on? And so then as it got uh, about an hour or two to time, he took me to Revelations 3.11. So let me take you there. So I'm going to take you all the way back through this as quickly as I can. And it says here, let me know if you can hear me, by the way. It says here in Revelations 3.11. It says, um, he who overcomes, no, let me go back up. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown. And so he said that. And then he said, okay, daughter, you see the crown there because earlier in the morning he had spoke to me and told me to go start reading Genesis. And remember, I had finished reading Revelations on Monday. So I went through the whole book and he told he took me back to Genesis and he said go to Genesis 3 11 go to the same verse so I went there and I want to go there with you this morning before I get into this message now I had not read Genesis 3 11 remember I said I stopped at chapter 2 so Genesis 3 11 says who told you that you were naked have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? And if you read this, I would have to go back. You know what? I'm going to read this for you. So I hope you guys can hang with me and you feel like having some scriptures on today. Because I want to give you this word out of revelations that the Lord said. It's all about your crown. The enemy is trying to steal your crown. In the book of Revelations, we see that to the faithful church of Philadelphia, the Lord had a message, and this was the message that he gave them. And so let me read this for you so you can see that they were able. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, These things saith he who is holy, who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, and have kept my word, and have not divide, de, uh, denied my name. Indeed, you have kept my word, and you have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet. To know that I have loved you because you have kept my command to persevere. I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which is to come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast to that which you have and let no one take your crown. And so here the Lord says, because you have kept my command. 
I'm going to keep you from the hour of trial, which is to come upon the whole world to test those who dwell upon the earth. But there is a crown. And he said, behold, I am coming quickly. Let no one steal your crown. And so it's not a crown that we have. It's the crown that we press toward the mark to receive that is waiting for us. And Paul tells us that. But let me go back to Genesis so I can make this clear to you. So everything that happened in the beginning, things that were taken, we receive back at the end if we finish our race. And so the enemy does not want you to receive the crown for those who finish the race. And so he tries to deceive you. And that's what happened with Eve, Adam and Eve. And so the serpent was chapter three. The serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, you shall not which is in the midst of the garden, the Lord God said, you shall not eat, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good or evil. Let me know if you can hear me down there. So when the woman saw that there was that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together. So here is the enemy deceiving them. And in the end, the Lord says in, in verse 3, 11, he says, have you eaten of the tree which I commanded you that you do not eat of? So the enemy stripped them of their crown that they were supposed to have. He stripped them of their royalty. The word crown, when we read it in the book of Revelation, means a badge of honor, a symbol of royalty. It means that something that you're given when you're completed your race as well. And so here they were in the Garden of Eden and the Lord had given them a command. And because they didn't keep the command of the Lord, he had to, um, they were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. And the crown of life, the royalty, the royal life that they were supposed to live was denied them because verse 11 says he, um, you have eaten of the tree, which I commanded you not to. And then the Lord goes on to say, because you did not keep my command, I'm going to do this, that, and the other. And all the curses came in. And so, beloved, it's about the crown. We see in Revelations, the Lord showed me in Revelations 3.11. So we have Genesis 3.11 and we have Revelations 3.11. So everything that happened in the beginning is restored all the curses that happened in the beginning, we see being restored in the end in Revelations as Jesus conquers things. And so Genesis 3, 11, and it didn't have to be there, but God is so good that that's how he speaks to me. He brought me from Gen he brought me from Revelations back to 3, to uh, Genesis 3, 11, to see where it was at, how they connect. So Genesis 311 they lost their crown in Genesis 3 in, in Revelations 311 the crown is restored he said don't let anybody steal your crown if you overcome you will have this crown so Adam and how were they going to get that crown they were going to keep their crown by because you have kept my commands so Adam and Eve disobeyed God and they lost their crown and then we, and then this church, Philadelphia, obeyed God, and he let them know that this is the way to keep their crown. And so the we, why am I saying this? Because the enemy's biggest um, work of deception is to deceive us, to distract us, to have us settle for good instead of God's best, to get us to doubt God so that our crown can be taken. Because a crown is a word that symbolizes something, someone who has finished their race. It's something that you're given at the end of your race. Let me take you to 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 8. 
And I'm releasing this word because somebody needs to hear it. So whether you catch it now or you catch it later, you need to hear that the enemy is after your crown. The enemy wants you to settle for God's best. He wants you not to follow God. It is hard to continue to follow God and do what he's called you to do versus doing what you want to do. Jesus said, narrow is the way uh, that leads to life and few there be that find it and wide is the gate that leads to destruction. But let me go to 2 Timothy 4 because this is how um, this is how the crown is won. And these are the things that the enemy is after. I know you may have come on and you thought it was going to be about you. And it is about you. But it's about following God wholeheartedly to the end. And that's how you receive the crown that is laid up for you. And so we don't have, we are already deemed royalty. You see that in 1 Peter 2 verse 9. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And so we know that we have been given this, just like Adam and Eve were a part of God's royal family, but they lost that access through disobeying God's commands. And so what does that have to do with us? Because the devil will deceive you to, into doing something God never told you to do, or he will deceive you into... Um, not doing what God called you to do. So his whole, his whole job is to distract you like and bring in doubt like he did with Adam and Eve to get you to do something you know God didn't tell you to do. So here is Eve. God has already told them, don't eat of the fruit of the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. But she goes and eats it anyway after the devil tells her, God is lying to you. He's holding it out on you. So his whole goal was to get them to doubt God long enough to do something God told them not to do. They heard God say not to do it, but the enemy brought enough doubt and, and, and used words to confuse them and make them think that, okay, maybe God meant something else, then he didn't really mean that, right? And so let's go to, let's go to um, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse, I mean, 2 Timothy chapter 4, and it says, I charge thee, he's talking, this is Paul talking to Timothy, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will run and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. For I am, al for I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. Watch this. I have fought the good fight, Paul says. I have fought finish my race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, with the Lord, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day, on that day. And not only me, but all who love his appearing. So what am I saying? Let me give you this word, this definition of crown, so you can have that. So that you can be very clear about what this means for and. So there is a crown and this word crown means it's called Stephanos. That's the Greek term for it. And it is a badge of royalty, a prize in the public games or a symbol of honor. And it's elaborate. It's an elaborate symbol that you have completed a race a prize in the public for games. So it's a symbol of honor. It's a symbol that you have completed your race and it is a badge of royalty. So this is the crown that we will receive. So 1 Peter 2, 
And let me go there. First Peter two and verse nine says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So the Lord has already made us a royal priesthood. He has already given us, given us this honor of, of royalty, but we have to complete our race. So there's a crown laid up for us. So just like Adam and Eve, there was a crown laid up for them, but he started them out with royalty. When we are born again, then we are part, we become God's sons and daughters and we become a part of his family and we have access to him just like Adam and Eve had in the garden, we can, the veil is rent and we can go in to God for ourselves. We don't, we become the priest of God where it used to be just high priest. So we have royalty. We are priests. We are royalty. We're kings and priests. The Bible says we have been made this, but there's a crown that can be taken. So you're given this crown. You don't see it yet. It's waiting for you, but it's yours. Henceforth is laid up for you a crown. So the crown is yours, but you have to finish your race to receive it. So Adam and Eve have been made God's children, part of his royal family, part of the priesthood where they could go into God and see him and talk with him. That was later when sin came in, only allowed for the priest. So in the beginning, we see that there was they had this relationship and access to God, which is saved for those who are in his royal family and the priesthood. And so they were there and they were royalty. And that's what we see in first Peter chapter two, verse nine, that we have this same access to God. OK, so we are there, but we have to um, but we have a crown. And Paul says it's when you finish your race that you get this crown, that you get to rest. Then when God says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. So then we see that Adam and Eve lost this access. They lost this royal position by not following God's command, by doing what they aren't, by the enemy deceiving them. So the enemy is after your crown. And so what he does is then we see in the book of Revelations 3.11. So that's Genesis 3.11. They didn't follow the command of God. And then Genesis and then Revelations 3.11, we see that he tells the church of Philadelphia that let nobody steal your crown. And this is how. Keep my commands. Keep my commands. Do, do. And then we see Paul saying that he has been poured out as a drink offering. He has fought the good fight. He has finished the race. He has kept the faith and that he knows that there is a crown laid up for him. So your crown is not necessarily the thing that you walk around, even though you're a royal priesthood. Um, and you have been given this and you have been made um, God's children, a holy nation, a royal priesthood. God has made you a part of his family. The enemy is after your crown and he will take that crown from you if you by deception, just like he did Adam and Eve. And so Paul says to run the race, to complete the race, not to be distracted, not to let's see the things that people have lost their crown for. So he says to Timothy, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season, convincing, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when people will not endure sound doctrine, getting away from sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, having itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. So you want to hear what you want to hear. Okay, so there's no balance in, in the teaching uh, that you hear or what you believe. So you're getting away from God. Um, Turning away from the truth. This is how the enemy deceives and distracts you. Turning aside to fables. Be watchful in all things. Not willing to endure affliction. So the enemy sends afflictions. Uh, the word says, Peter says, that when our faith is tried in the fire, it comes forth as pure gold. So the enemy sends afflictions. He's, the Bible says that he would even try to deceive the very elect. 
And so there's a deception. There is the affliction, the affliction and the long suffering of the saints. And I know this may not be a popular message, but tuck it away somewhere because you might need it one day. And so when you're not willing to endure, when the enemy is always at work, the Bible even says that he left Jesus for a season. So he even tried to tempt Jesus. So Jesus had to come through that. And then in the Garden of Gethsemane, I hope I'm saying that word right, he tested Jesus again. He, Jesus sweated unto drops of blood because he had to force himself to submit to God's will in the flesh um, because he could have called legions of angels. He could have done it as God, but because he defeated the devil on his own turf in as a human, in the humanity, then he had to say, so he sweated, he had to bring his will in line with the will of the Father because he was about to suffer. So who wants to suffer? And so Jesus did this. So he, so he showed us how to do it. And let me go to Hebrews. Because I just like to back, back things up with word. Hebrews 12. Where, where is Hebrews 12? Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 12 says, Therefore, see there's a cloud of witnesses that have been through. And we know that. Hebrews 11 is the faith chapter and it's not all peaches and cream. It's not all roses. It's people who have suffered but came into their crown, received their crown. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and every sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself self lest you become weary and discouraged in your soul see the enemy wants to get you weary so that you do not finish your race you have not resisted to bloodshed like jesus striving against sin and have you forgotten the exhortation which speaks to us as to as unto sons and some people think of sin as sins of the flesh fornication um, partying and, and all those things are, but those are the sins of the flesh. There are the sins of the spirit where we get into disobedience, where we get out of the faith, where we get into, as Paul said, we won't endure sound doctrine. We come up with fables and our own teachings. And so that don't line up with scripture because we try and make scripture fit what we want it to say and what we want it to be to make it easier on us to follow. But there's your crown is at stake. And so the enemy's job is to wear out the saints and to try and take that crown. That is his sole goal. And I was watching David Wilkerson, who I love, uh, which is probably why I minister the way that I do. This was last week and I was watching him and he, one of his videos, he mentioned how, he mentioned how he was doing, how there's a video about um, the things that people can get lost in and go to um, and and not make it to heaven that are not sin because in the days of Noah men were eating and drinking and and um, and giving themselves in marriage and all these things right so he talks about this but they had waxed cold they had given up on the faith they hadn't made time to really spend with God and hear him and follow him and so the devil's job is to get you into deception to pull you away from God to get you doing your own thing he comes and see the thing is he's not going to come for you like he comes for me He's not going to come for me like he's going to come for you. He's going to do whatever it takes to distract you, him and his demonic army. And so it's important that you know that he's trying to steal your crown. So I don't know what it is. I was looking for that video. I don't know what what the enemy may try and use on you. Use uh, on you, to distract you, to deceive you, to get you to question what God has already spoken to you. Because the thing is, and I love uh, Dr. De um, Paul Stanley. 
He always says this, and this is so true. Sin will take you further than you wanted to go, keep you longer than you wanted to stay, and cost you more than you thought you'd pay. And so you have to understand that sin is not just sin of the flesh. Sometimes you can get off on your own thing. Sometimes you can get away from God. Sometimes you can hold offense and unforgiveness in your heart, or you can begin to judge others. You can get off. The enemy will use whatever it is that he can. And there is grace and God's forgiveness. So he gives us grace and he gives us forgiveness forgiveness, but the enemy's job is to get you so far off that you do not receive that crown, that you live in deception long enough, just like Adam and Eve, that you lose that crown. Paul said he had to keep the faith. He had to finish his race. And I don't know what your race is, but I do know that it's to keep the faith that you started with. This is why in the book of Revelations, Jesus says that Return to your first love when he's talking to one of the churches. I don't know what your what your what your race is, what God has called you to do, but endure it. Um, like Jesus said, like Paul said in Hebrews, that endure the race that is set before you, looking unto Jesus as the author and finisher of your faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. There is a gospel that makes everything peaches and roses. And while and while God does want us to enjoy life, enjoy life and he does have an abundant life for us, and we are supposed to be living that now, and the book of John, I think it's, what is it? Third John, I can't remember, says, uh, beloved, I wish that you would be in good health and prosper even as your soul prospers. So there is a success. There is a fruitfulness that God wants us to have and enjoy eternal life now with him. There are outside forces. There are spiritual wickedness and heavenly places that wants to keep you from that. And that might be by deception. Um by easing up and getting uh, spiritually lazy and not seeking God, not doing the thing that he's called you to do, taking the easy way out. I don't know what it might be for you, but beloved, the Lord says that if you keep his command, whatever that thing is, he's called you to do. And Paul said, if you endure to the end, then there's a crown, a crown laid up for you. It is yours, but the devil is trying to take it throughout your whole Christian walk. That is his job to try and take that crown, to try and deceive you. And he did it to Adam and Eve, which is why our Lord and Savior Jesus had to come because they had God when they had communion and access with him and were able to walk with him, but it did not, where they started out is not where they ended up. And so you can start out well, but Paul says you have to finish your race. You have to finish your race because when you finish your race, then the crown that is laid up for you is given to you. So I know that there is a message of that we have a crown now, but that crown is laid up for you, but it's not yours yet. Scripturally, not what we want to hear and teach. That crown is laid up for when you finish your race. Now we are royalty. Let me say it again. We are royalty. First Peter 2, 9 tells us that, that we are a part of a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Um, and so we are given that, right? Just like Adam and Eve were given that, but they lost that because they did not obey God's commands. And the enemy wants you to do that too. You've already been given this position, but the crown that you will receive is laid up for you in heaven when you finish your race by keeping God's commands. And let me just end because I got to get on this call. So let me just end by going to Matthew um, and this is what the Lord gave me yesterday morning. So again, he took me to Revelations 3.11 and then Genesis 3.11 because he had me to start reading the book of Genesis because I've just been reading wherever the Lord directs me. And I had finished Revelations on Monday and then he said, and so I was asking the Lord, what should I read? So I was reading my um, utmost for his highest and I was reading 
nothing else did I read. My utmost for his, for his highest. And just Psalms until I heard the Lord speak to me. Lord, what should I read now? And he took me to Genesis yesterday morning. And then yesterday evening, he told me to go back and see. He said Genesis yesterday morning. He said, see the end from the beginning. You read Revelations and now you're going to see how Genesis lines up with that. Now you already know that, but he wanted me to see some new things. And so that's what he showed me. And um, so here it is. Jesus says in Matthew 21, I mean, Matthew 7, verse 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, we have not, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonderful works in your name, many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart me, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness, you who do not keep my commands, you who do your own things, you who go off. So there is a not keeping God's command, which the enemy is at work to try and help you not do that can cost you your crown and he does that by deception by getting you to say God didn't say that the Bible don't mean all of that it don't it don't take all of that or God didn't say that or God will tell you to go left and and the devil will tell you surely you can go right or keep going straight it, it doesn't take all that. And before you know it, you're further than you wanted to go. You're, um, it costs you more than you wanted to pay. And it takes you longer than you wanted to stay. And so you have to be careful, not just if you're, if you're not doing sins of the flesh, you still have to be careful to walk with God, to follow him, to obey him, to do what he's called you to do specifically and through his word so that you are not deceived by the enemy into getting off and him being able to steal your crown because it's not just a one-time thing. Paul said, I have been poor. I'm ready to be poured out. I have finished my race. I have kept the faith. He who endures to the end will be saved. He who endures to the end will begin, will get his crown. And so your crown, your, your, your status is something as we see in the book of Revelations. It's up to you because God has given it to you. It's up to us. God has given it to us. It's not that God um, hasn't already given us just like he gave Adam and Eve, but the enemy seeks to devour. Peter says he seeks around like a roaring lion, like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So we have to be on alert. He said, be watchful, be on alert, because the enemy, like a roaring lion, seeks those that he may devour. And so I just wanted to come on and share this word with y'all. I just wanted to come on and say, look, there is a crown of righteousness. There's a crown of life. There's a crown laid up. For you if you will finish your race and we hear that that crown is ours now and it is but you don't receive it until you finish and so beloved it's about your crown do not be deceived do not slide back do not um, stay in your lane finish your race Focus, because the Bible says, as I've already read, in the last days, people will not endure sound doctrine. And there are so many things, there's so many ways that the enemy wants to distract you and so many distractions, division, deception, um, depression. He wants to get us off. He wants us to think that God didn't mean what he said. So we begin to do it our own way, to live our own way. And I know this is a sobering word. This is not a, you know, a word of, um, it is a word of an edification and encouragement, but it's not the type that you won't be blessed tomorrow. God have a, he has all that for you, but you have to endure some things. And so I don't know where you're at in your walk, but God has a crown of righteousness, a crown of life laid up for you. And so I just want to encourage y'all. I can't see if y'all are, oh, wow. Um, <laughs> thank you. I can't see what people are doing. That's a shame. So if I haven't um, answered a comment or anything, I apologize for that. 
But anyway, I've got to get on this call. But I wanted to share this word because God gave it to me. I shared it on a prayer call last night. Um, and he, he, so again, as I close for you that are just here or that will watch it later, he told me to, I had finished reading Revelations, which he directed me to read uh, last week. So I finished on Monday. And then I was waiting for the Lord to tell me what he wanted me to read this week. And it was Genesis. And he said, go back to the beginning, because I'm going to show you how things that were taken are restored. So the end, and then he brought, I hadn't read chapter three, I only read two chapters because I had an appointment. And then last night as I was resting before getting on this call to minister, he spoke to me and said, uh, go, he said, let no one steal your crown. And he took me to Revelations three and then he took me and he said, go to Genesis three eleven. So he took me to Revelations three eleven. And then he told me to go to Genesis 3, 11, and they match up. So here, and not, and not all of that is going to match all the time, but God knows how to speak to us. And so he showed me in Genesis, in Revelation 3, 11, let no one steal your crown. And the way that you do that is through keeping my commands. And then he took me to Genesis 3, 11, and he showed me how Adam and Eve, Eve had lost their crown or their royal position through not keeping his command. That's the key words in both of those verses. And so um, that's it. The enemy wants to, and then if you read up before you get to those verses, you see that it was about keeping the command and you see how the enemy distracted them and deceived them into um not obeying and believing God so that he could get them to do something. It seemed good. It seemed right. You know, it seemed like, okay, God wouldn't, surely this is okay. Surely, you know, that's what he does. Um, Eve wasn't knowingly disobeying God. She was, but the enemy deceived her in such a way that it seemed as if it was right. But it wasn't, and it cost her her crown. It cost her her royal status. It cost her that um, the blessing that God had given her. And so we come into salvation, and we're blessed with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places. We are given an inheritance. God has an inheritance in us, and all of that. We are called a royal priesthood, and all of those things. This is all true. But beloved, you have to read the whole book. Paul says that it, the book of Revelations and all throughout the scriptures, we see that that can be snatched from us, the crown. I'm not going to debate theology, once saved, always saved, and who thinks what. I, I, I don't know. I, I pray that I will never.